So I'm starting with uh, the daily rapid arena. Warm up for the blitz tournament with some slower chess. All right, playing Gambit. 0047. I mean, I feel like I should Gambit against this opponent. Stafford Gambit time. I might be risking my rating. After this game, I should check my, my stats. All right, I'm going to insist on the Stafford Gambit. But no Stafford. Okay, we'll have a symmetrical Italian. H3. Yeah, so sometimes when white plays H3 early, then there's prospects of playing H6, G5, G4, but that's only if white castles. Yeah, in this position, there's maybe a few options. I think I'll start with h6. I'm going to stay flexible. And so far, it's completely symmetrical. Yeah, now I'll play g5. I'm pretty sure I had this position yesterday in the Super Blitz Arena. Happy birthday. Thank you, Neil DV. Thank you, Pablo. Welcome back. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, I appreciate all the kind words and messages in chat. So knight h2, okay. Knight h2 is essentially prophylaxis against g4. I'm going to play rook g8. I'm making my intention very clear. I want to play g4, open the g file, play knight d4 here. Or do I play g4 immediately? Maybe I play g4 immediately. And I don't mind if uh, if takes takes and double pawns aren't too bad. Okay, we have a, a pretty sharp position to start. Like three moves ago, it was maybe the most boring position one can imagine. It's just completely symmetrical. But now it's, it's heating up. This g-pawn creates some spice in the position. And there's this lingering tension between the pawns. I mean, I imagine white will take. And then and I can choose whether to take with knight or bishop. Probably knight. There's a line like takes, takes, f3. And maybe I can throw in queen d4 check or bishop h3. Other lines where I want to play knight d4. Access C squares. How big is your middle age crisis? Not so big just yet. I feel like I completed the opening on life. And now I'm entering the middle game. Similar to this position, like we're basically done with the opening, even though I haven't castled, haven't fully developed my pieces, but trying to make the most of it. I could play this move. Yeah, taking a non-traditional path here. I want to play g3 to prevent white from playing g3. The problem is white takes and then it seems like there'd be a lot of counterplay on f file. So knight d4 has the benefit of simply improving the piece. In some cases, if white plays g3, maybe I can hop in. I also free up the c6 pawn, or the, the c7 pawn, to move to c6. Maybe eventually this. Also ideas of knight e6. So still keeping options open. We have g3. Yeah, let's start with c6. Rook e1. I guess white wants to play this. Although knight f1 will allow this move. So one idea that comes to mind is b5, bishop b3, and then a5. 
I have a4, I take, take b5. Choices, choices. Let's start with b5. A nice and aggressive looking. Actually thinking queen b6 here looks interesting. It reinforces the pawn in the event of a4. I think my king's going to be staying in the center. 30s are good, but 60s are twice as good. <laughs> Coming from old Walter. I'm looking forward. All right, so knight f6 here. Looks pretty good. Or uh, knight f3, I should say. Knight f3. Takes, takes. Yeah, let's just go for it. I don't think it's good for white to take. Even though this knight is like so passive, it wants to trade off. I'd open the G file and then there's ideas of like C4 and Rook G3 eventually. But if King, actually, what does white do here? King G2, oh, wait a minute. King G2, I take the Rook. This might already be winning for, for black. Oh, Slowpoke asking, have you played spell chess? Yeah, I saw the, the new variant. I saw like one video on it, but I haven't played it on chess.com. But I, I played another version of it. Um, there were a couple, couple of viewers slash mods in my chat that like programmed spell chess maybe a year or two ago. And I played it on their website. So I wonder if they had some involvement with making it come to chess.com. Uh, okay, c4. Well, this isn't so simple. I want to play c4, but then queen takes f3. And then that hits a knight. No, I thought I would be winning something, but maybe not. I mean, there's also the idea of taking on g3 immediately, take and then this. Because if this, it's mate instantly. If this, it's queen f2 mate instantly. If king h1, queen f2... I guess there's rook. No, rook e2. I guess there's rook g1. Happy birthday, Eric hey, it's Tagi. Thank you, Tagi. Let's, let's go. Wait, I got the focus here. Okay, take, take, and then c4. King h1, queen f2, rook g1, knight g4. Looks winning. So the only thing I'm not sure about is d4 and i take i'll be down a rook but both the pieces are attacked take take i mean i should just play bishop g4 i'll analyze after if, if rook g3 was playable I, I couldn't make the line work after c4, d4. I appreciate all the good vibes. Um, unfortunately, I'm probably going to have to uh, just not look at chat for the remainder of this game. <laughs> Getting low on time. The position is really nice, though. Uh, pawn is attacked. So do I, I go for this? Maybe I do. 
The idea is to take on g3 and play c4. Or play c4 and then take on g3. Realizing I could probably throw in this move too. Try and trap the bishop. Yeah, there's some nice x-ray vision with a rook aligned with the king and my queen aligned with the king. So this construction, it looks stable, but it's not the most stable. If the king moves away, then f2 becomes more of a target. Then the queen's tied down in some cases. So opponent taking time. I guess if I want to be extra solid, I could play rook g6. Just defend. Maybe even like put the king over, put the rook over, put all the pieces on the king side. Because it's hard for white to do much. Like this structure essentially restricts the knight and bishop. Yeah, let's go for a5 here. So if queen takes h6, I play c4, hitting this, but more importantly, hitting f2 and threatening mate. Yeah, I guess now rook g6. Although there is this move first. Kind of like that. Giving white the option of taking. Because there's no need to prevent a move which isn't good for the opponent. And I'm pinning this pawn, so c4 maybe strikes more of a punch. Okay, so I'm pretty sure white took the bait. Now I play this. And the queen can't really generate much counterplay. Like all these squares are controlled in my territory. I guess maybe there's this move. But queen h7 still gets mated. Tagi gifting 10. Thank you, Tagi. 448 total gifted subs. Engine with a prime sub. Yeah, if you were gifted a sub, say thank you. That's super, super generous. Taking? Wow. So if I take, I lose my queen. Very fancy. I could take with the rook. I could just move the queen too. I'm just trying to make sure I'm not blundering anything. Um, I take with rook, take. And first I'll take my time before taking any pieces. I'm calculating a funny line, queen c5. So first of all, if knight c7, king d7, then I get stuck. If knight here, the funny line is takes, takes, and then rook d6, and the queen's just trapped, I think. Because I, I control these squares, control these squares, control this square, these squares, these squares are covered, pawns defended. Meanwhile, yeah, the knight's attack, the pawn's attack twice. F7 still undefended. B2 could hang. Maybe I queen in some lines. How messy can I make the board? I highlight every square before the opponent moves. Did I do it? No, D3. E2. H2. E8. <laughs> D7. I think I did it. G8. Every oh a one. G four. Every time I think I highlight every square, I see a new square. E four f three. Okay. It was probably not the best thing to do while the opponent was deliberating. <laughs> Had to make some artwork though. Okay, so the knight is actually trying to survive. But if I play this, it should be trapped. Ooh. 
Wait, can I trap the queen? Rook h8, no, rook. I should just take triple pawns. One capture away from quadruple pawns. And quadruple pawns are probably not happening here, though. Ooh. Okay, so let's play this. I'm trying to trap the queen. So queen h7, probably king e7. And now knight f6 looks pretty unstoppable. Oh, now it's white with triple pawns. But yeah, this queen has gone a bit too far. Okay, that was actually a cool game. Um, I'm actually curious if this is any sort of opening theory. It has been reached in master level play. Engine says... Oh, Engine says, like, Black's already equalized. Knight H2 is the only move to not be worse. After Rook G8... Yeah, it seems difficult for White to play, actually. Like, what happened to the game? I do want to check the line I was analyzing with Rook G3. So I played Bishop G4. Engine likes Rook G3. I just couldn't figure this out. Take here and then D4. And then take and then take. Like, I saw these lines, but I was scared that my knight is hanging in the end. But the engine is just fearless. Engine just says, take the pawn, attack the rook. It's so funny to have five pawns on these three files. Yeah, I guess the bishop is just trapped and my king is relatively safe. I see the question from Zadri. Yeah, unfortunately, the the company that I work with for the merch, um, the larger mugs have been out of stock for a while, and it's a bit out of my control. So I'm not sure when they'll be back, but I'm pretty sure the 12-ounce the mugs are still in stock. Speaking of, I should make a, a coupon code for today. Um, maybe I'll, I'll do it uh, between games or after the tournament. Okay, uh, let's play E4. Oh, opponent berserking. Okay. We'll have a blitz game <laughs> in the rapid tournament. I'll play d4. We'll have a Smith Mora. And c3. Do you have any birthday plans? My plans are to gambit and then attack and then hopefully checkmate. But first, I have to develop. Okay, bishop c4. Ah, okay, my opponent's playing the... Actually, one of the best lines. This is what I would like to play. But I don't think bishop takes c3 is the best move. Hmm. I'll play e5. Restricting the d-pawn from moving. Now maybe bishop g5, maybe rook e1 first. Just reinforcing the pawn. So if knight g6, I, I defend and then I'll push the h-pawn. If b6, I might have a, a very devious idea. Okay, I wanted to Greek gift, but Black's not allowing it. Let's still play Queen E2. Probably go for this. Set up the mating idea. There is a common principle when you're white and you have a pawn on E5 in the middle game. In most cases, you should attack on the, the king side. So that's what I'm trying to do here. I guess Black's going to defend, like h5, knight f8, defending h7. So Black plays h5 himself. 
Wow. Let's play bishop a3. So now if the d-pawn moves, I'm going to take on d6, and the bishop will support the pawn. If the d-pawn doesn't move, I play bishop d6 anyway. And then that looks like full domination, like bishop d6, knight g5. No mercy here. Probably threatening to take on f7. Take, take. Yeah, white has a lot more attackers and black has defenders on the king's side. Even ideas like g4, h5. And this opening worked out pretty well. Barrow says, hope your 20s gambit opening got you a better 30s middle game. Yeah, not sure how much I sacrificed in my 20s. I did sacrifice a lot of, a lot of pawns, a decent amount of queens. I mean, throughout my 20s, I played well over a thousand Stafford gambits. Thank you, Tuzajin, gifting five. Hi Eric. Hi chat. Hello. I like hey, it's Slot Fox. YouTube videos a lot. Got a good chuckle from Stockfish One. Ah yeah. Two. That was probably the buggiest I've ever seen Lee Chess. But to be fair, I I wasn't really using the feature correctly. I was just using it very impatiently. But it was so funny to like see Lee Chess make a piece deep like disappear and then reappear and then yeah it looked like sockfish hung the king even though like the server didn't register the move okay i guess i still have to work for this i'm up the exchange but black is trying to hold on this is now actually kind of a threat so let's play this. Okay, I should bring my king in. Oh, I miss bishop c6, or rook takes c6. Uh, yeah, I should have listened to Ben Feingold, never play f3. Especially when there's a free bishop. Okay, this will just take a little bit longer. Why is there a mosquito? I have my trusty blindfold mosquito whacker. I'm not sure if that was a mosquito or like a large gnat. Ah. Okay. Uh, it's not trying to like attack me, but it keeps flying around. What to do? Trying to catch the mosquito and my opponent's king. Which one can I catch first? Is there an opening called the mosquito? I feel like there is. Okay, this is actually going to be quite nice. H6 is coming. Wait, openings. I'll check after this game. At least kings can't fly. Yeah, that would be be much harder to catch a king if it could just fly off the board. Enter the third dimension.
Man, this is still a struggle. King f7 defends a pawn, but then, okay, I have rook h6. Making progress. If king g7, I'll take with this rook. Oh, Joe did not realize they were subbed. Yeah, there was some gifting earlier, so say thank you to whoever gifted you. Okay, <laughs> I didn't catch the mosquito, but I caught Lax King. Um, mosquito? Wow, the mosquito gambit. It's a variation of the England. D4, E5, Queen, H4. Wow. I feel like I've seen this once before and then forgot about it. Have I ever played this? Opening Explorer. I've never played this. If I encounter d4 next game, maybe I'll try this. It looks terrible. <laughs> Knight f3, best move, queen d8. When two people on each chess play. Queen h5 looks reasonable. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to find some bug spray and also try and make this merch coupon code. So BRB and stay tuned for maybe a mosquito gambit. Happy birthday, birthday cake. Okay. Uh, where is the tournament? Here we go. All right, I'm back. Yeah, I just used a little bit of this just to make sure I don't get bitten. Your chair just got $15. Hey, Miguel. Thanks for the $15. Happy birthday. birthday I appreciate cake. that. Yeah, I replayed the donation. That would be like a weird infinite money loop if I could just replay, keep replaying the donation. But, uh, okay, we have a Philidor. I'll play d4. d4, or maybe I'll play c3. Happy birthday. Treat this like a, a Ponziani. To catch you live again. Oh, thank you. Hono kicks. Sorry if the TTS is a little bit low. Just raised it a little bit. Yeah, A6 is um basically giving me a free tempo. Maybe Black was scared of this and this. Let's play this. Okay, I have this move now. So I'm kind of abandoning the e pawn and the knight. But this looks pretty problematic for black. And this is one of the benefits of c3 early. Queen can come and combine well with the bishop and attack the b pawn. Oh, and also, yeah, the, the birthday coupon code should be working for merch. Okay. Hey, it's I Love Pizza and Chicken. Okay, just getting this link. Ah, where's my thing? Okay, let's take this thing. Okay, merge command updated. All right, now, yeah. It's a matter of trying to get more things to attack the king. So if takes, I take with the knight. The only thing I have to watch out for, like takes, takes, king here. 
It could be like some eventual Queen D1 ideas. But not quite. Can I play H3? Mm. I, I feel very spoiled for choice here. I think I'll play h3, though. Simply attacking the bishop. And if the bishop takes, I can throw in this check. Force the king to c6. Yeah, queen e6. Queen d5. Although, do I want to play queen d5 or just take the bishop right away? Probably queen d5 first. Because then the rook will be hanging. Yeah, maybe Bach has some other options there. Knight c5 was a playable move maybe at some point. But now, yeah, the knight and the rook are both attacked. Bishop e3 on the horizon. I do allow knight d3. Knight d3, king d1 should be okay. Actually, knight f2 in that line, but okay, it's not happening. I'll play bishop e3. Yeah, I mean, positions like this, <laughs> they're completely winning, but it's still a fun kind of mental exercise to figure out the most efficient way to checkmate. And the opponent making my life a bit easier. So there's two legal moves here. Okay, resigning was a, another legal option. Um, okay, that worked out nicely. Queen b3. How many games have occurred in this position? Uh, bishop. Bishop h5 most common. Wait, I'm really surprised that black score is so much better. How does black score so much better here? Queen b7. Maybe black just treats this as a gambit. I mean, the engine says white's winning. It's just a low sample size of games. But it's crazy that white... I would have expected white to score at least 70% after queen b3. Ah, d5 also playable, because if takes, then there's bishop f7. Okay. All right, moving back to the tournament. Played three games so far. Question about posting a video link. Uh, yeah, generally links just get deleted by Nightbot, but you can whisper me a video link. <laughs> Welcome back to Gari. Thank you, Gari. Shout out to Gari. Yeah, there's no way for me to actually um, easily like disable the Nightbot restrictions. Okay, let's play. I mean, I haven't had a true Stafford yet, so let's go for this. We had the one uh, symmetrical Italian, which actually led to a very short position. Toggy, toggy, toggy. Ah, gari, gari, gari. <laughs> I, I feel a sense of nostalgia there. Hey, it's I Love Pizza and Chicken. Happy birthday. I'm getting merch. Quack. Yeah, we do have the coupon code birthday gory, gory, for merch gory, today. Gory, gory. <laughs> Okay. Wait, what is this line? D4. Let's play D5. There's a line where bishop, like the super sharp line, bishop C5, bishop C4, knight F2, bishop F7, which I don't really want to go into. Mm. 
Mm. Can I... I want to play this move, but takes, 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 takes. Bishop f5 looks playable. Queen b6 actually looks playable. I think I'll play queen b6. This feels like a reverse version of last game, where I, I move my c-pawn early, I'm bringing my queen out, hitting this. Not really double attacking, but I'm making it so if the bishop develops and b2 is hanging. Also, thank you, followers. Gifting to lip to neck green. I was thinking about playing this. Bishop g4, take, take, but then queen c8 is a small issue. Maybe just bishop e7. Or bishop c bishop c5, c3. Castle. Let's go for this. Bit more aggressive. I have this move. There's e6, take, take. Take. Looks pretty good. B4. Played super quickly. Can I... I can't quite win a pawn. Yeah, B4 is actually a good move. If I take, the queen will take. Maybe I just move back. Favorite Grandmaster, ben Feingold. Oh, hey, Ben Feingold. I get impersonated by people who aren't Grandmasters. Ah, uh, the truth ridiculous. hurts. Also ridiculous. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Captain Swing. Okay. Got to focus here a little bit. Uh... It's not super simple. I think I'll play I'll play knight f6. I'm gonna lose a pawn. It's attacked twice and pinned. Unless is there some some trickery c5 doesn't really work. Yeah, I'll play knight f6. And then if takes, I just take. Queen takes and then rook f7. Okay, let's play this. Yeah, my opponent's played a, a very good game so far for the rating. It still feels like I'm I'm solid. Might end up trading very soon. I have an idea to go for this and then this. Eventually get some kingside attack. F4. Could start with rook e8. I could on passant too, but don't really want to open the f-file for white. Let's start with this. So I'm threatening some discoveries against the queen. Mainly bishop c5 or bishop takes b4. On passant is forced. It's only forced in some small communities on the internet. Ooh, opponent showing no fear. No fear is sometimes a, a good thing, but sometimes it's a bad thing. But am I actually winning anything? Like, bishop c5, queen h3. 
I guess takes takes. We have some like almost trapezoid rhombus shape. Knight g4. Queen goes off here, here. Yeah, it's probably better for me just to take the pawn. As much as I want to play bishop c5. What about take, take, and knight d5? I lose a seven. Yeah, okay, let's just take the pawn. Happy birthday. Thank you. A stony play. And Nordertal. Happy 17 months and 14 months. Happy birthday, Eric. Oh, I could have played bishop c5 and duck h3. But then my opponent could move the queen and put the duck on d4 if this were duck chess. Yeah, in duck chess, I don't think I would have any obvious tactic there. Because the opponent could also put the duck on e7, potentially. <laughs> but there's no duck to block white's problems here. Yeah, let's move back. Now, I am giving back the a7 pawn. We'll see if white wants to take it. Okay, so knight g5. Maybe I should just play king h8. I could also play b5. I could also continue to overthink things. Let's play b5. Just expand with tempo. Or maybe a5. Or maybe now knight d5. Yeah, I like this better. Because the queen's no longer attacking the pawn. Now I can play this. The knight is pinned. But not easy for white to exploit. If c4, I take it. Mm. Play this move. Even... Uh, how to do this? Not easy to defend the pawn. I could take on f4. Yeah, for some reason I was looking at defense rather than offense. Ooh. So if I take the rook, I get mated. Very tricky. I could take the knight. Just probably the best move. Just making sure I'm not missing anything. Because if rook takes, it looks scary, but I take the bishop with check and then recapture. Okay. Are we going to see queen b8? A queen b8, I would play rook e8 with check, so <laughs> there's no queen takes e8. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, my opponent actually played very well for the rating. I may have been worse at some point in that game. Yeah, like after bishop e7. So I was supposed to take on d4. A knight f5 would have been really strong. Hitting this, maybe setting up queen g4 too. Yeah, good opening for my opponent. So in this position, bishop e7, best move. Or knight a6. Bishop e7 is probably most natural though. 
Okay. So again, for anyone just joining, we're doing a viewer arena starting in just over an hour and 15 minutes. Feel free to use a join command. It'll be a blitz tournament. But for the time being, I'm playing the daily rapid arena. How are the standings? I have 13 tournament points. Leader has 37. Might be hard to win the tournament. That was Vush saw the most recent video probably <laughs> against Boston Mike. All right, moving on. Um, I played e4. Let's play knight f3. Let's uh, mix up the opening a little bit. We have c5. So I could go into Sicilian. I think I'll play a, this tricky move order, e3, which could lead into like reverse Nimzo or reverse Queen's Indian. Welcome back, Irene. Thanks so much. Bishop, yeah, Bishop b2. This is exactly reverse Queen's Indian. Now, yeah, a6 prevents bishop b5, which is a very typical move. But I can play c4 here. And d4 is pretty restricted. Now I think I'll take and play d4. And the basic strategy for white is to trade d-pawn for c-pawn. And then leave black with isolated queen's pawn. But I'm not in any rush. Essentially, I'm waiting for the bishop to move, and then I'll take on c5. Wow. Bishop e4. Happy birthday. Thank you, Beelzebub. Welcome back. Trying to process this move. I think I just keep developing. You reinforce the knight. Okay, black spending a lot of time. So I'll keep improving. And now I am threatening to just take and win the pawn. Welcome back to Joe Brun. Thanks so much, Joe. I have not tried spell chess on chess.com. I have been getting a lot of questions. If I have time, maybe later, maybe sometime this coming week. Okay, let's take the knight. So some transformation here. I like the idea of f4, not only reinforcing the pawn, but threatening to trap the bishop. Yeah, we're going to have some fun here. The bishop will retreat. And now it's a question. Oh, what to do? I have this move. I think e6 is the type of move I just play and enjoy whatever happens. If takes, takes. Actually, if takes, I could throw in this first. Hmm. I play e4 here. Go over e4. The idea is to remove this pawn and open the diagonal so my bishop can come to c4. Ooh. Okay, so now I have bishop h5 check. I could start with e5 too. This is probably where I slow down and calculate a little bit. I like the prospect of e5 though. So I simply hit the knight. And now I can throw in this. Oh, there's a funny line. 
Bishop h5, king e7, take, take, f6, take, take, and let's mate. Happy birthday, Eric. Let's do it. Gotta lift those rooks. Oh yeah, it's time to rook lift, bro. Oh, thank you, Matt. Oh, getting the uh the rook lift tank top. Nice. Haven't worn that one in a while on stream. Okay, what to do here? Just looking for looking for a reasonable approach. Maybe this move. Because there's a cool idea. If bishop takes, I can take on d5 with a knight. And if pawn takes, I win the bishop. If queen takes, I would... I thought I had this move, but I'm realizing there was bishop e4. But we're not getting getting that. It may have been based on a small oversight there. Okay, g6. I'll throw in this. And now I'm less interested in winning this pawn and more interested in winning this pawn. I'd be nice to en passant. Belated en passant. Not quite possible. Oh, welcome back, Tasnab Ignore. Happy 22. Twenty-two months of me not really ignoring you. Okay, so freeing up the other bishop, hitting the rook. Mm. Okay. Seems like mate is. I mean, it feels like mate should be forced here somehow. I'll just keep giving checks. Check. 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 Just kidding. Checkmate. Okay. <laughs> uh, that was a fun game. It started with um, a pretty like solid positional line. Reverse Queen's Indian. But in the middle game, I just had better development. And then I think once I got the pawn to e5 and played f4, it was, uh, it was all fun for white. Thank you, D Hazy. Okay. Playing powerful. Ah, powerful. Ah. Like full of power. All Still right. Sicilian? In rows and toggy products in your store. Oh yeah, I have to um have to design something. Or put together some design ideas. I am due for some new uh some new designs in the merch store. Okay, playing a Scandi. Nine of six Scandi. This is definitely not a challenging line. Cause white basically just gave me the whole center. And I think the best way to play this is to castle queen side and go for this e5 idea. Been a while since I've tuned in. Welcome back, Pocky Penguin. Happy nine months. Oh, I forgot about the mosquito. But I don't think I've encountered d4 yet on move one. Okay, so first question is, can I win a pawn? 
Like take, take, take. No, because take on g4. I could play h5. I mean, c4 might be coming, so. I could consider taking and then taking, but I'm not super fond of giving away the bishop pair. What about e5? e5, c4. Not super sure how to proceed here. And objectively, this might be the best approach, just to take the pawn. Is there anything to be afraid of? Like, take, take, take. We could get some endgame. I have double pawns, but I'll be up a pawn. Take, take, take. Queenie 295. Yeah, the more I'm looking at this, the more it seems like I should just go for this line. A pawn is a pawn. I'm not even getting double pawns. Because, yeah, if takes, I take the queen first. And if queen takes, I take the knight. So I guess what's happening after queen e2? Queen e2, knight e5. Hitting the bishop. Bishop e4. Maybe queen c4 in that position. It looks playable. Let's go for it. Yeah, it's possible white has some compensation here. And maybe I should have been a little bit more careful. 95. Or 95. I'm thinking bishop e4, just e6. and then get the bishop developed. Wow. Okay, so now I could take with check, which I should probably just do. And then queen d5. So we're trading a lot. The one downside here is white has the connected rooks, I'm still a bit underdeveloped on the king side. But I'm offering the queen trade. And I don't don't want to give white any initiative. F five blocking the check, hitting the queen. A queen here, then you could probably play a six. Hey, it's John Bartholomew. Thank you, John Bartholomew. I appreciate the raid. If you're just joining, hey, uh, if you're just joining, I play the Scandi. Uh, hashtag Team Scandi in honor of John. Trying to make John proud. Opponent just made Luft. I think I'll go for e5 now. It's finally time to develop my king side. And if rook d1, I'm happy to take and get two rooks for the queen. If c4, probably happy to trade queens. If queen c2, I play this. Try and be solid. Isn't John's birthday coming up in like a few days? Or am I mistaken? Maybe it's Ben Feingold's birthday. It's like the sixth. But I'm <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Like some strong player is born in September. Mm. 
Okay, the rook's attacked. I want to activate the rook, but I don't want to lose the rook. So do I play rook? Yeah, rook d7. Looks solid. Oh, John's birthday is September 5th. Oh, wow. Happy early birthday. Okay. I could play bishop d4 here. Like bishop d4 and then this move. Should be three. Calculating this, this, this. And then this. I mean, there's options. I think I'll go for that. Also, big thanks to everyone like DMing me. Um, I've been getting like a lot of DMs this stream. My watch keeps buzzing, so I appreciate those people who are sending the DMs, but apologies, I can't respond right away. I have to try and convert this position first. I do actually have a trivia question, um, which sadly I'm not the answer to. The question is, who is the strongest chess player born on this day? I'm curious if anyone knows the answer. Bonus points if you name the top two strongest players born on this day. It's not me. Maybe I'm within like top 10 born on September 3rd. But there's there's at least a couple of grandmasters that I'm aware of. It's not Magnus and Hikaru. Good try though. All right, how to do this? Opponents resisting. I think I'll play a4. It's um, a classic positional move. Fixing the pawn on the, the dark square. Now I'll play c5. I just want to use the b-file. Hillary Duff. Wait, Hillary Duff is born today? Or maybe on this day, like years ago? I see one right answer in the chat. Okay, now, wait a minute. Now, now let's take the pawn, because if pawn takes, I can start pushing. If bishop takes, if I want to be really fancy, I could take and push, and that's probably winning. But I can also play c5 there. Me gift hey, it's Tagi. <laughs> Thank you, Tagi. Leads go. Okay, do I want to be fancy? Take the bishop, push the pawn. That's probably the cleanest approach. There, there. But c5 is also like quite clean. Let's play c5. Because I have just such a dominant bishop. My, um, what do we call this? Wooden shield. And then rook b3 is coming next. The only way for white to try and save the pawn is bishop here, rook b3, bishop c1. But that walks into rook b1. Wait, is it Tani's birthday today? 
Like Tani. A lot of people are saying Tani. Oh, it's his birthday today. I didn't know that. What's his fide rating? Is he higher than me? No, I still have a few points on him, but probably not for long. Yeah, so the strongest player who was born on September 3rd is Arjun Ergaisi. As far as I know, unless there's someone above him I'm, I'm missing. I'm pretty sure also uh, Grandmaster Alexander Onushuk, who uh, actually used to coach me at like various chess camps. What prize do I get for guessing it? I could gift you a sub. Can I gift a sub on my own channel? Gift subscription, go to checkout. Payment processing. Hey, I gifted you a sub. <laughs> happy, uh, happy birthday to you. Probably belated birthday. Okay, um, that was a feel good game. Stemming from a Scandi. Got the John Bartholomew raid this game. I will say that I wasn't entirely confident if White were to play bishop e4 here. Because White has a bishop pair, like some scary moves are maybe coming. Engine says... I was going to play e6. Engine says it's close to equal. Maybe White has compensation. Wait, Pologryovsky? All these players who whose birthdays I have not looked up. Paul Grafsky was born November 20th, according to Google, but maybe not according to ChatGPT. Oh, Gad Zanisko paid it forward and gifted to Tonsenkos. Appreciate that. Yeah, if I keep gifting subs, then it's, it's infinite money. Probably infinite money for Twitch and not for me. <laughs> Okay, so we move on. Um, if I encounter d4, then maybe I'll try this Mosquito Gambit, which is plus four for the opponent. So depending on my opponent, too, we'll see what happens. Wait, what? Oh, okay, I'm white, so let's keep mixing it up. I'll play... I'll play this. And let's play, what is my opponent doing? Let's play this. And they're pre-moving. What are the odds? Okay, they didn't pre-move. <laughs> I was trying to catch them, but that's okay. We'll treat this as a gambit. Knight d7. Uh, it's probably not the best opening, though. I played g4. Uh, this is a bad decision. g4. Oh, let's play d4. Okay, just a small gambit. I think I'll play this. Combine it with rook d1. And then queen h4. Looks interesting. Queen b6 is a good move. Actually, I've really misplayed this opening. I think I have to go into damage control mode. Like bishop c1. Yeah, I can't afford to play b3. 
or can I? B3, queen B4. Maybe it's playable, actually. B3, I do knight A4 and bishop D2. It looks so wrong, though. But generally, like, if you don't see anything wrong with something, you should just go for it. If there is something wrong with this, I'll learn a lesson. And now bishop d2. Queen h5. Guess I have this move. Guess my opponent just wants to trade queens and be up a pawn. If queen g4, maybe queen c7. In the meantime, I want to play bishop e2. Not the happiest move. What about knight d4? Thank you, Zamfovex, gifting five. I'm really regretting the opening that I chose. Uh, what to do? Knight e4 is coming, take, take, knight g5. Yeah, let's go for that. Knight h5. I was banking on queen c7. It looks scary, but I might as well do it. Wow. Now I'll probably castle. Man, I have to be really, really careful here. What about knight h5? Or uh, knight h4. Knight h4, queen moves. And then castle. It's a bit awkward for both of us. If I castle first, take take bishop e5. Oh, bishop e5 traps a queen. Wow. I think I have to play this. Man, super risky play. G3? What about taking the knight? And G3 here. And this looks so wrong, though. I really don't see too many other options. So I'm still down a pawn. Bishop g4 happens. So I have this move. I'm trying to process everything. There, there. It's getting real messy. I mean, the queen is almost trapped for black. Like, both our queens are almost trapped. So I have this move now. Attacking the queen. These moves seem scary, but my knights are covering both squares. So my bishop would be pinned in the event of the knight move. Oh no. 
Okay, I completely overlooked knight d3 and queen takes e2 checkmate. Opponent misses it, though. <laughs> oh, my opponent's moving a little bit too quickly. And now maybe, yeah, now maybe I just take and castle and then avoid getting made in. F4 is also interesting, though. F4, take... F4, take, take. Am I tr no, I'm not trapping the queen. But am I winning material? I'm not confident in my calculations here. I think I'll go for this. Take feels like the like the G pawn's almost overworked, but my bishop supports f4 as well. So if takes, I take with bishop. And if takes, the plan is to take here, hitting the queen. And if queen takes, we trade queens. I take the bishop. I'll be up a minor piece for two pawns. I could take with queen too, but probably better to take with a pawn. It's very important I have a rook here preventing queen f1 checkmate. And now we trade queens and yeah, I'm up a knight for two pawns. Threatening this and this. I really dodged a bullet there, though. Like, black could have been easily winning. Now, this will still take a bit of work because I have um, not the most amount of time. But the position is looking good. Okay, let's go back. Maybe like... Yeah, I think the goal... The goal should just be to simplify. I trade off the rooks. And black either has to trade or lose control over the d-file. If bishop d6, I have knight b7 to trade further. Yeah, after the game, I can show the, the missed win in more detail. Okay, here... Um, yeah, let's play C5. And trade, trade. Okay, plenty of time. Have you ever seen a trumpeteer swan? I I don't really know how to distinguish between different types of swans. So that might be hard to answer. Okay, still have a nice bind, maybe threatening this. And then the knight can reposition. I think the goal is to create some mating net with uh, 
the rook, bishop, and knight. So the king is now forced back to the, the back rank. If knight of six I take, and I'll be threatening maiden one. Uh, an F7 coming. Let's start with check. And then this. Black is very close to forcing stalemate, but the pawn can move, so rook f2 doesn't quite work. Rook h7. Uh, I guess I'll just mate with bishop and knight. If Feruja can do it, I should be able to figure it out. Oops, what did I do? Why am I struggling? Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Okay, this is the, the fanciest way to do it. There's a B2. The endgame fee in Kado. Okay. Not my proudest game. I mean, my opponent really, like, punished me <laughs> after this e5 move. When I played e5, I thought it was, like, a cool gambit idea, but it didn't Happy quite work. Birthday, Eric. Oh, thank you, E-Rogue. I appreciate that. Yeah, huge thanks to everyone for all the, like, super generous support, all the birthday wishes, people getting merch... Gifted subs and donos. Oh, and also some people doing research on Grandmasters born this day. So, Anishuk, Sargissian, Rashad Babayev, Nevejni. Some, some names I haven't heard of, actually. <laughs> and Arjun Aragaisi. Yeah, I wanted to share... Uh, I'll probably end up posting this photo on Twitter. This is a photo uh, that Irene Sukandar actually took last year at the Abu Dhabi Masters. For your birthday. Um, I meant to tweet this out last year on September 3rd, but I forgot. So hopefully I can tweet it out this year. Thank you, Gary. Oh, thanks so much, Gary. I'll put that towards the pizza fund. Okay, um, yeah, let me just show, yeah, this, it could have been really bad. Wait, it was forced made in three. Ah, because F2 hangs. Yeah, I missed knight d3. Like, when I played knight c5, I just assumed I'm, I'm controlling d3, but queen e2 is a may threat. And if king f1, I could run, but I can't hide because queen takes f2 mate. So the game could have ended pretty abruptly. But hey, I made no no mistakes and no inaccuracies. Almost a perfect game on my part, right? Opponent also made no mistakes. Thank you, an Happy actual birthday, goose. Happy birthday, Eric. Really appreciate that. Oh, is tweet no longer a thing? Yeah, it's going to take me a long time to adjust. Okay. Anyway, moving on. 
playing Jelly Peppermans. What to play? I haven't played like a true Ponziani yet. So we'll have a Ponziani. Bishop c5. Bishop c5 is like a kind of ironic move because it looks like it's fighting for d4, but it actually makes pawn d4 stronger because black loses time having to move the bishop again. I had a similar position a few days ago in the monthly classical arena. My opponent had played takes and then d5. So here, I think a similar strategy applies that I can just grab space with pawn e5. I do allow the bishop to come in, but I'm not too scared of that. But there are some options here. Could consider bishop b5. Like all these bishop moves are possible. Queen b3 is maybe possible. Bishop e3. Oh no, my tempi. Yeah, that's probably what my opponent is saying. Lost a tempo. And I'm taking time here because I'm just trying to figure out like the best way to develop. Like I know Black's probably gonna go for an eighty seven next move. And there's some idea of taking and trying to win D four. So I could play bishop e3. Maybe not a bad idea. Just reinforce d4. Staying flexible where to put this bishop. And like going forward as we finish the opening and approach the middle game, I'm just going to try and like keep optimizing the pieces. Make use of the space advantage. Put the rook on c1. Oh, do I have a tactic here? Bishop takes h7. I'll admit that, like, when I played bishop d3, I didn't see the fact that I'm potentially setting up this tactic. It's the type of thing I should have seen coming, but it looks to be working. It's a different type of Greek gift, though, because the bishop's here. So the point is, after takes knight g5, if the king defends a bishop, I would have a g4 trapping the bishop if the king were here. But in this case, yeah, I win back the piece, so I want a pawn, and I'm basically mating here. Like, how does black not get mated? Maybe rookie eight. But then I'll have some fun. Yeah, I'll be winning the queen. Let's check. Anything better, check. I don't see force mate, but 96 is pretty devastating. I really want to take. Take, take, check, knight of five, though. Okay, I'll take the queen. And then f4. Did I miss maiden one? Someone says <laughs> maiden one question mark. Queen h8 would have allowed knight g8. And then then black is preventing knight e6. But I'm just curious if I had anything stronger. Queen h5 may be also possible. That was a feel-good game, though. Like, opponent made kind of a... Um, it's a classic amateur mistake in the Ponziani, playing bishop c5, but then made a, a very clear tackle mistake with castling. Okay, back to tournament. Top 10. Still pretty far away from first, though. Okay, keeping keeping things clean. 
I, mean, I should have lost that previous game. <laughs> Opponent had made in three. So I just want to check my rapid stats. I'm on a 25 game win streak. Hopefully I don't jinx myself. Let's play a serious opening. Let's play um, a non-Stafford Gambit. I'll play the Accelerated Dragon. And we have the, the Marazzi, which is one of the most trendy things to do against the Accelerated Dragon. Um, I'll play this move order with Knight F6. Knight F6 and Bishop G7, they look similar, but they lead to slightly different lines. Because um, now I can play d6, and if bishop e3, I play knight g4. So this is the main line. Now I take before the bishop can take back. And now castle. Queen d1. Don't think queen d1 is the most common move. So we have a very standard position for Marazzi bind. And I'm not booked up here, but I do know some general plans. One plan is to just push the A pawn, which I think I'll go for. Like there's cases sometimes black goes for A6, B5. But in this case, oh, I guess A4 is prevented, or is it? No, A4 take, I can take on E4. Yeah, let's still go for this. This is multi-purpose. Like I'm trying to weaken this diagonal for white. I'm also freeing open uh, the a5 square for the queen. But a3 looks really nice here. Like there's a typical idea of takes I can take on e4, as then the knight's undefended and pinned to the rook. So we have queen b3. Wow. Queen b3, queen a5. I could start by taking and then white structure is kind of fractured a little bit. Happy birthday, Eric. Oh, thank you. Mole SG. So I'm considering taking queen a5 or knight e7. I think these are the top three candidate moves. Also bishop e6. And one thing I like about this is I keep the tension. And if takes, I still have this idea. Hey, it's Phoebe. Uh, Phoebe. How do I pronounce the name? Phoebe, right? Phoebe Witt. Thanks for the raid. I appreciate it. If you're just joining, I'm trying to figure out what to do in this position. Queen a5, pawn takes pawn, knight takes e4. It gets messy. Rook takes, takes. Looks good though. It's one of these positions, like there's a lot of good looking moves. I just have to not overthink things, not burn all my time on a single move. So bishop d2, now I can take. Cause I like the I like the X-ray vision now. Maybe knight d7. And there's also this X-ray vision, so uh, it could get messy. I'm considering queen h5. Bishop e6 comes to mind. Okay, I'm going to start with knight d7. It's a very typical move in the, the dragon and accelerated dragon to just unleash the, the bishop, which supposedly breathes fire along the long diagonal. And then the knight can come to c5 and apply pressure. There might be ideas of putting the queen on e5 and then having the battery.
But so far, it seemed like a decent opening success. Oh, Phoebe's birthday is a week from today. Oh, happy early birthday to Phoebe. So September 10th, I assume. I'll have to try and remember to send a raid if you stream on that day. Okay, so Rook AB1. Um, Bishop D4. Knight C5. Yeah, let's start with Knight C5. And this is a huge focal point. Imagine bishop c2, although bishop c2 obstructs the queen from defending the bishop, and now probably bishop e6. Attacking the now undefended pawn. Like, white wants to consider knight moves to attack my queen, like leaving both queens hanging. But the problem with the knight moves is the bishop's not defended, so... Basically, any knight move, I just take the bishop. And this is really the dream. Like, from the position where I played a5, a4, like, this is the best I can ask for. Like, both bishops, queen and rook, knight, they're all applying pressure to the weak points in white's position. But it's not every day, or it's not every game that you can get this against uh, the Marazzi bind. Like, sometimes it's white who's just squeezing black. Yeah, I didn't want to take on c3 and win the a2 pawn. Maybe it was playable, but um, it's definitely not worth giving away the bishop. So now can I take on c4? Some things to calculate. Happy birthday, More merch. D. Thank you, quarantine chess noob. So I'm calculating takes knight d5, and then I take back. I think it's all fine for black. And a pawn is a pawn. The knight's so good here, like defending b7 too. So white goes for this. So now it's just very confusing because my queen's attacked, white's queen's attacked, e7's attacked, which would come with check. At first I was thinking I'd just take the queen, but I think I'd take the knight first. Because I don't want knight e7 to come. It takes, takes, takes. Yeah, we're going to be trading a lot. And I think once the dust settles, I might be winning a2 in the end. So after all the takes, 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 I think black will be up two pawns. There's not too many ways for white to avoid the queen trade. I see there's a comment, you can't take the knight well, now, yeah, I can't take something that's already off the board. Yeah, so we see takes, 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 and after takes, takes. That worked out nicely. I can check with the engine, um, but that was like a really kind of feel-good game from the black side of a Marazzi bind. And this a4. Yeah, so queen a5. Knight g4 I did not consider. It's a cool move though. Okay. Yeah, it seemed pretty clean. Hey, perfect game. Or almost perfect. 97% accuracy. <laughs> Less blunders compared to some of my previous games. Okay, moving on. Hey Eric, 
Have you played pickleball? I haven't. I was close to playing once. Fellow fellow streamer Katie Learns uh, visited town, uh, what, a couple of months ago. And we were very close to playing pickleball, but we ended up just playing tennis. But I'd like to try someday. C3. Confusing move. This is a Saragossa opening. What do I do against this move? E5 or probably D5. We'll probably transpose into some kind of Kali or reverse Slav. Okay, opponent's going for maybe a reverse check Pierce. I wonder if F, F6 could make some sense. But Knight C6 makes more sense. Just develop. Okay, so we're basically getting a reverse Pierce. And then it's a question which setup I want to choose. I mean, maybe I'll go for f6 and like this kind of English attack setup. It's something I play from the white side. Usually when I'm white, it comes from like a Jobava London move order. So I'm essentially down at tempo, but maybe getting some active play. I could castle here. Castling does seem risky because... Um, I'm basically walking into white's potential attack, but I don't really see how white causes any like big issues. Because usually it's a b-pawn that wants to move, and the b-pawn is blocked by the queen. I should note that d4 maybe looked attractive, but white could just play c4. And I don't want to open the diagonal for white. So, what to do? And bishop here looks attractive. Starting my own attack. And the classic idea is h5, h4, take, take, eventually checkmate. Am I scared of this a-pawn? Maybe a little bit. Like, I'm debating whether to allow a6 or just ignore it. Or, yeah, basically ignore it and allow it or prevent it. I mean, a6, b6 looks like I'm a bit weak, but I don't see any huge danger. Worst case, I move the knight back and hunker down. So I think I'll go for this. It's interesting, though. It's getting spicy. Yeah, I, I do enjoy like a lot of sports that involve rackets or paddles and a net like the solo a lot of solo sports like ping pong tennis like volleyball too okay probably 97 to reinforce Yeah, because my queen was a little bit overworked there. Okay, am I... I think it's still fine. Like, always have to watch out for these potential tactics. It, at first, it looks like the queen might be overworked, but the rook is useful in defending d5 in the event of trading on h3. I've never played squash. I've eaten squash. 
Oh, I like badminton too. I don't get the chance to play too often though. Okay, so b6. I mean, white's threatening maiden one, so. Yeah, we do see a similar theme to the previous game where I, I was black, I had the fiend kind of bishop, and I used my a pawn to create weaknesses. And white's basically doing the same thing to my queen side. But the difference, okay, there's a lot of differences, but one difference is we're basically guaranteed to trade bishops. Unless white wants to keep the bishop and sack the exchange, which is not happening. And now, I guess I have to wonder about knight g6. Oh, uh, what to do? I don't want to waste time, but knight g6 is a little bit annoying. I mean, maybe what I'll do, I'll just play g5. So I got initiative, like knight g6 here, take, take. Well, he gets one move to try and disturb me. I'm not scared of h4. Even though my g-pawn's pinned, I'd probably just move back. And we're reaching a position where... Yeah, the attack is coming, hopefully very quickly. I have this move. Anything better? There's this move, which is interesting as well. Are there... I don't think I can resist. I and mean, the more I'm looking at this, the more I'm liking it. So if pawn takes, I would check, check, and take, and mate. If that takes, I just take back. And now I'm threatening this move. Always play f3. I also have ideas of this move. Yeah, I wanted to do this, and if king takes, then I have the fork. I really want to play knight d4, but then queen a4. So let's start with this. Okay, now I have f3. And now we'll probably see a pretty finish. And do I have a queen sack? Like the. Oh, wow, it's almost working actually. There, there. Wow. I mean, I could play f3 or I could start with this move. This and then this. It's so unnecessary. Uh, I don't think I can resist, though. Because it, it's such a beautiful line. I'm... Yeah, let's imagine queen a4. And now queen h3. Oh no, my queen. And I take with check. King g4, and then... Check here and then checkmate. Let's go for it. There's some other lines too, which are maybe even more beautiful. Oh no, my queen. It was actually really beautiful. If king g2, I play f3. If king takes again, it's mating on the g file. King g2, f3, 
king g1, I play knight e2, king h1, and then g2, checkmating with a pawn. I don't even need my rooks for that mate. I just need the pawn and knight, basically. Happy birthday, Eric. Oh, thank you. I mean, there's also rook h2, but I think this is even more aesthetic. Someone con ambulance. Also, thank you for the 3,000 bits. Dosh Sway. Really appreciate that. Oh, what a position. Yeah, I lost my queen, but the other pieces are making up for it. A lot of ambulances need to be called. So yeah, there's three legal moves. If king h1, I can... I can play g2 and then knight e2 mate, or take and then knight e2. Any way to get the pawn mate? Nah, this is, this will be a nice finish, g2. It's another case where I don't need my rooks. Okay, <laughs> that was a cool finish. I missed a free knight after knight g3. Knight g3 was never played, though. Oh, after knight g6. Oh, queen f7. Oh, fancy. I should have I should have considered that. I was more focused on um, not losing a rook. Queen f7. Wait, does queen f7 not work? Ah, queen f7, there's queen b5. Maybe it's still fine for black. But it's not super clean. Yeah, the idea would be uh, knight takes h8 and then I win the queen. Which I completely missed. Um, and then going forward with what happened in the game. Yeah, f3 was... I mean, everything is winning here. f3 was simplest, but... Knight d4 was pretty aesthetic, and then, yeah, engine shows the horse mate. Take, and then take. And... Okay, rook h2 is slightly more efficient, but always play f3 with maiden, <laughs> maiden 3. Okay. Is the tournament almost over? Tournament might be almost over. Go back. Oh yeah, tournaments, pairings are closed. So that was my final game of the tournament. <laughs> a nice way to finish things. Um, yeah, I'm not finishing in the top three, but I had some fun games. I hope people enjoyed that. Got some nice, instructive, beautiful rapid chess. Um, I'll probably make this as its own YouTube video. Maybe I got sidetracked a decent amount, but hopefully the YouTube viewers in the future don't mind too much. Hopefully the, the chess made up for it. Um, yeah, if you're watching this in the future, uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to watch live on Twitch. Don't forget to use merch. I'll probably still have the merch coupon code be available. Uh, coupon code birthday to save 15%, at least for the next like, week. Have a, um, a week-long promotion. 